you in part by Warrior Boats, The Badger Sportsman, Big Snow Resort, Wilderness North Lodge, Jiffy, Hard and Soft Fishing, Bartline Barrels, Cold Snap, Deep Freeze, Otter, Kamik Law Firm, Lynch of McGonagall, and Wings Over Wisconsin. And remember, it's a great day to be alive. Out in the great outdoors. Holy moly. on Larry Smith Outdoors. We're up here on the Wisconsin River fishing below Nakusa here, and this heads down into Petenwell, and Petenwell is actually the second largest inland lake in the state. And in the spring like this, you've got a lot of high water because we've had a lot of rain this spring, and it really draws, a, I always say this, the more flow that you have going down into the system, the more fish that come up into it. So today what we're gonna do is we're gonna be pitching jigs up on some of the shorelines when you got this high water, there's a bunch of gravel bars. We'll probably drift over and try to catch fish on here. And one thing about this area is you got to remember, there's a size limit on it, not like the Winnebago system. The fish have to be 15 to 20 inches in between that or one over 28 inches. So that's a big thing to remember. We've got uh, a couple of guests on here today. We've got Tom and we've got Dale. So we'll see who's got the hot hand today or who loses the most jigs. So stay tuned to see what happens this week on Larry Smith Outdoors here up on the Wisconsin River. The warrior story continues with the best tracking, driest ride in the industry. Designed with a high degree of dead rise and bow flare to push water out and down for a smooth, dry, comfortable ride. The smart trolling keel limits bow drift for enhanced boat control in the wind and with a lifetime haul warranty, Warrior Boats are built to last. Warrior Boats, a legend reborn. Badger Sportsman Magazine, the premier outdoor magazine. Published in Oshkosh and written by Wisconsin sportsmen for Wisconsin sportsmen. Get the most out of your time in the woods or on the water. Subscribe to Badger Sportsman Magazine today. Hey folks, the Badger Sportsman Magazine wants to see a picture of you having fun in the outdoors. And to have a chance to win a trip with us here on Larry Smith Outdoors and a hard and soft water fishing kit, all you have to do is submit that picture to thebadgersportsman.com. Galen's grubs have been out fishing other plastics for years thanks to their unique action. But the time has come to shake things up a bit. Introducing the Kalen Seismic Series of Grub Swim Baits and Worms. Whether you're drop shotting them for bass or swimming them for walleyes. Look at that walleye! Their action is earth shattering. is just we're dragging them jigs and you just let them grab come around and grab the back of it and let them hang on to it that's the hardest part nice job here we go finally oh if you want to call it a fish hey you know what I do believe that uh, Tom and Dale you guys did say 10 bucks on the first fish right all right, if you want to call that a fish, right? Oh, there you go. How about the second fish? Uh, the second fish is not worth anything. It's only the first one. 
Oh, you call that a fish? Oh, the one I let go could eat that one. There we go. That one, they just barely hanging on. Nope, a little bit better. Ugh. Oh, you got one too, huh? Is that one better? Netable? Oh, that's a better fish right there. Oh, that ain't gonna cost me no fashion yet. Hey, that might be a little closer. Is that 15? That's what they gotta be here. Oh, Not 15? Yeah, come on, Tom. Right, funny? Whoa, keep reeling. It's probably a little bit busy. Yeah, that's going to be close. That one might be worth measuring. You're saying 14 and a half, Dan, Dan, the cameraman? You are 14 and a quarter. You're way off. When you're putting that calens on, what I do is I like the tail to ride down so it doesn't get hooked on the hook. So I'm going like this, coming around and pushing in that plastic all the way up there and the tail is actually pointed down. This way when you're jigging, it won't, it won't hit that, uh, the hook. Oh, that's a thing. There we go. This one, this one should make it. I'm going to bring them around right here. Can I get my this rod on? That one might make her by Cracky. Hey, hey, hey. hey. Tom, I guess the first keeper gets all the eggs today, all right? You know, we've been moving and moving, and uh, we finally got on a decent pot of fish here, and there you go. It's about a 16-incher. All right, first one of the day. Got the kalins on her in the middle. Basically just vertical jigging through here. And just lifting it, I'm just popping it, lifting it, popping it, and just holding it there. About the third time, I just hold it there for about maybe about a second and a half. Works out pretty good. Oh. Patrick, what are you doing out here? Mark, I'm going fishing this weekend, but with this massive selection of trucks, I can't figure out which one to take. The brand new Lynch McGuanago stores have a massive selection of brand new Chevrolet, Chrysler, Dodge, Jeep, and Ram trucks, cars, vans, and SUVs. Make your next stop at the all new state of the art Lynch McGuanago dealerships today. Nobody sells for less than Lynch. Proving yet again that the best never rest, Otter introduces Otter Thermal Tech, the proprietary full thermal shell found on every 2015 Otter shelter. Beginning with the all-new XTH hub shelters and the all-new lightweight one-man XT hideout, on up to the ever-popular XT and XT Pro Series shelters that have earned a near-legendary reputation for unmatched toughness and durability. At Otter, we know stopping at good enough is way overrated. This ice season, see for yourself how the best just keep getting better. Here we go. There's a little bit better fish. Hey, it might be number two for me. Come on. Thanks, Tom. Look at that. Kalen's plastic. That thing has got that thing absolutely dumb. Look at that. Slurp that thing right in. Another nice fish. You know, again, I'm just kind of popping it off the bottom two or three times, about four inches, because I figure these fish are all compressed tight to the bottom. And then I'm just holding it. And every time I do that, when I'm holding it, they're just swatting it hard. This is a nice fish, you guys. I'll tell you, this one just absolutely slammed that thing. This thing has got a lot of weight to it. I don't know what it is. Probably a big walleye, but it's big. No doubt. All I want to do is see it. Boy, this thing, he absolutely throttled that thing. Hopefully it's a big walleye. Oh, that's a big fish. Oh, they look at the size of that walleye. 
This is a 10 pound fish right here. Look at the size of that fish. Come on, Tom, get him in there. Woo! Nice job. That is absolutely a dandy. Wow. You know, I'll tell you something. That's one thing about the Wisconsin River system in this slot. That is absolutely a dandy of a walleye right there. And again, you know, look at that Kalen's jig. That thing is engulfed in the mouth of that fish. Look at that, gone all the way down in there. Pop it out of there. And you know, I'll tell you, it makes a really big difference when you're fishing these fish is to, they want it real slow and I'm just holding it off the bottom and I'm just barely twitching that, that jig. And that's the cool part about when you're using them kale and grub tails, you hardly got to move it at all versus other types of plastic. That thing's got such a unique action to it. That is absolutely awesome. Gotta love it, right? Come on, you guys. Hey, I got the biggest fish so far. Ooh, there's a big keeper. There we go, you guys. This one, there you go. Another nice fish, I'll tell you. You know, it's amazing how that sun came out and started warming that water up, and these fish just absolutely came right on now. This morning, boy, we were struggling. I mean, there's a couple other guys when we went up by the dam up there doing pretty good, but now that that water temperature came up about two and a half degrees, boy, it really made a difference. It's a decent fish, but nothing, nothing big enough for a nut. You know, again, that's a nice part about fishing this Wisconsin River system. You're always catching lots of fish. There's a nice fish. There we go. Got him, Tom? You know, again, now what we're doing, we're up in front of this is what they call 10 Mile Creek, and these fish are just sitting right on the edge of this break right here. And uh, hey, Dale, you had two big fish on this pass within two feet of the surface, and they both came off. We got to get you tuned in a little bit there. Here we go. Oh yeah, nothing big though. You know what happened here too is that that sun went away. And I always say this about this this body of water, small walleye, is that the, it's always better when it's sunny because of this tannic water here, this dark water. These fish are really conditioned to bite during the, the, the high sun. High pressure is usually always better here. Kind of totally the opposite of the Winnebago system. Same thing, you know, that real light bite like that. I mean, they're barely grabbing that thing at all. Right there. Chunky little fish. Definitely a finesse bite. And that's one thing that's really key about them kalins is again, that kalins tail, when you put that in the water, you don't have to hardly even breathe on it and it's moving. You know, that's something about fishing. You're always trying different things and, and adapting all the time. Adapt, 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 adapt. Oh, there's a good fish right there. Look at that one. That is a nice fish for sure. I'll tell you, I let that thing sit on there for about at least 30 seconds. And they're just barely, you're not even, they're not hitting at all. Ever since that sun went down, it's just, just that very light bite and they just come up behind it and they're just basically, what they're doing is they're holding that bait. And I try not to, when I feel that fish hanging on there, I try not to drop any weight down where that jig would, the weight of the drig, jig would go down. I try to keep everything as even as I can. And if they start moving a little bit, I'm actually even moving the rod with them. That's how touchy these fish got ever since that sun went down, but that's a nice fish for sure. You know what I'm wondering as I crack this egg open? What am I wondering? 
I'm wondering what our old buddy Shotgun Chef has got cooking this week on Larry Smith Outdoors, because I'm hungry. Thanks, Larry. I am Shotgun Steve Schaefer here in the kitchen today. I am making a smoked fish dip. My buddy stopped over and gave me some smoked fish. Once again, he had smoked fish. He went out to Lake Michigan. His buddies got drunk, ended up with a bunch of fish in the freezer and says, Steve, what can you do with it? So I'm going to show you a quick dip to make, put it out in front of your family, and they just tear it up every time I make it for everybody. Take and make sure there's no bones in it. Put it in your food processor. Put the cover on. It's going to get a little loud here. Oop, wrong way. Spin it till it's pulverized, so it's really, really soft. All right, we're all pulverized up here. Take my spatula, put it in the bowl. See how it crumbles right out and comes into the bowl like that? What I do is I put a little Philly cream cheese in the, in the sour cream in the bottom first. It's going, there's more going in the recipe, but I just put it on the bottom. So that way when you stir the fish up, it's a lot easier to stir it up. But I usually use about a half a cup of this. And for two pounds, what the recipe shows for, it's a whole Philly, but this one I'm using half. All right, now it's red onion. Same thing, I put it in a food presser, minced it really fine. And this is another one, folks, if you don't like red onions, use it sparingly, because it will taste or change the flavor of your food. Little sea salt, that's the taste. Granulated garlic, everybody loves garlic. But I love it too. All right, it's coming around. A little bit of lemon juice. Worcestershire sauce. And pepper. See how I do it? I don't buy the stuff in the can. I grind up my own pepper. All right, let's stir this up. And what I do is I'm going to put it on a little tray, put crackers with it, put it out on the table for parties, and people just devour it. It's great. Now I just got to find someone that can enjoy this product with me. Hey, uh, kid next door, Griffith, come on in, buddy. Hello, everyone. Get here, you, Griffith McCarley. Do me a favor, take a cracker and try one of these. I'm going to try one with you, too. Oh, put some on there, dude. Look at Dig deep. Mm. Dig deep, buddy. Look at Okay, folks, the problem with smoked fish is they get the stuff on your hands. You can't get it off. Here's a little trick. Take a little toothpaste, rub it all over your hands. Let it sit for a little while. Wash it in the sink, and all the smell of smoke is gone. From the kitchen of Shotgun Steve Schaefer, Larry Smith, you're missing out, my man. One of these days, you got to take me fishing so I can bring this home. With ice fishing just around the corner, it's time to gear up. Check out the new Pro Skimmer by Deep Freeze. Offered in 6-inch, 8-inch, and 10-inch models. The fastest ice skimmer on the market. And once you're ready for those tip-ups, don't forget about Blue Tips. The first tip-up alert system sent straight to your smartphone. Free app available on Android and iOS. Check out these and other products at deepfreezefishing.com or any of your favorite retailers. Big Snow Resorts, your destination for winter family fun in the north. Enjoy two resorts on one ticket. With over 400 skiable acres, it's the largest ski experience in the Midwest. Full service resorts offering pro shop service, hotel, chalet, and trailside condo lodging, six dining facilities, four bars, and with weekly special events, exceptional fun for everyone. For details, please call or visit BigSnowResorts.com today.
You know, when you're fishing a body of water like the Wisconsin River here and you have so many dams, a lot of the a lot depends on the current as far as where you're going to fish. Like last week up here, they had two gates wide open and the current was just screaming. And what, the, most of the fish we caught today have been in the main troughs. Well, last week with the amount of current there was, the fish wouldn't even be sitting in these main troughs. Uh, they'd be sitting always off to the outside. So you really want to watch that current flow. And like I say, when the current's really cranking up here on the Wisconsin River, you want to get right on the edge and you can anchor up in that deep water and pitch into the current breaks. That's where they're going to sit. And also, if you want a vertical jig like we're vertical jigging, I try to get around any of the bends where the current slows down. And again, you know, you got to think about that. These fish aren't going to sit out in that, that five, six mile an hour current. They're going to be in that current that's less than probably two miles an hour or a mile and a half. So that's the key thing when you're coming onto a river like this is to really watch that, that current flow. And up here, it really, when you, we get a lot of rain, that it's amazing when they open them gates up up there, how fast that current starts cranking through here. It doesn't take long, a couple hours, and them fish will switch where they're sitting. Same thing is when the current's cranking and they shut the dams up up there, the same thing and that current slows down, then fish are gonna move on you. Then they're gonna move out to the deeper water where there's just a little bit of current like today. This is almost perfect drifting through here. And a couple different times we tried anchoring up and pitching and it just, we couldn't get it to work for us today, but I know a lot of the other guys I saw were catching quite a few fish, just pitching at a 45 into that current and just letting that jig come around seems to work pretty good. It's all got to do with the flow. The flow, Joe. Hey, it's all got to do with the flow. Dan, Dan, the caveman cameraman. That doesn't rhyme. Drink down it. Nope, not quite big enough. A little bit close. Nice job, Tom. Can give that one a measurement, but I think it's going to be a little bit short. Still a good fish. You want to hold them up to the camera? So all your buddies at the sheriff's department can see you? Yeah, they'll see what happened to the big ones. <laughs> Here we go. Ah, no, another small one there. That's okay though. At least we're catching fish again. Boy, I'll tell you, we went a good half hour without catching much at all. Like I said, uh, them clouds came in. Boy, it just absolutely killed that bite for sure. Again, just went back to the Kalins and just, boy, I'm barely moving it. Just barely moving, I'm just twitching it right off the bottom right there. Dale just lost another one. We're gonna start calling you lose another one, Dale. <laughs> you know, this Wisconsin River runs right through the Petenwell Flowage, which is right down below us, and that's where these fish are coming up out of. And like I said earlier in, in the morning, that uh, the Petenwell is actually the second largest inland lake in the state of Wisconsin here. It was built in the 1950s, I think, 52 and 53. And uh, again, it's a flowage and, you know, average depth is about 20 foot out there. It is a walleye factory, a crappie factory, and we will definitely be back out here to fish this thing sometime this summer out on the lake itself, but it's a, it's a great body of water to catch a lot of fish in, so very enjoyable. Sustained system, like I say, um, it, it's usually better. I always call it the banker bite. That 9-3, look, is that a fish? Oh, that's a big fish. Pull it, pull it, pull it, pull it. Pull it. Oh, oh my gosh! Oh, is that a big? Whoa! Oh, that is a big fish. Holy oh, cats! You gotta hold that thing up. That is absolutely giant. This system has got awesome fish in it. Dale, there you go. You hold that beast up. We were just talking about. Petenwell is the second largest inland lake in the state and we'll be back this summer, but holy man, when you see a fish of that magnitude, and maybe we'll be back before then. That is absolutely a giant fish right there. What an awesome deal. Boy, you didn't even say anything, Dale. You're just all of a sudden I see his rod bowled right over and he's as quiet as a church mouse. I got one too, here. Got him, Tom? Get him. 
Not quite as big as the one that Dale just caught, but holy moly. I mean, that is absolutely, and that, I caught that one. I, hey, I switched over to a ringworm. I was being a little tricky here and got him on that one. But uh, boy, that is absolutely a giant fish right there. That is awesome. See ya. You know we're getting late in the day now. You've seen it though. Yep. That's live. <laughs> I bet you'll make it to the top. You, you don't think I can make it to the top? No. What do I get? A can of stand up? So I got it. Okay. I gotta touch that grass? I wanted the roll down it. I'm not as young as I used to be. I thought I could make it. Hey, thanks for joining us this week on the Wisconsin River up here at Nakusa on Larry Smith Outdoors. And remember, it's always a great day to be alive. Your putts, all your cases went flying back that way. What? Right? Yeah. See, I don't think it's right that you should uh, say that about our sheriff's departments being able to retire when they're like 32. You know, these guys work hard. I didn't say anything. Well, I heard you say that before. Have you guys been watching our show? Yeah. I can't believe they want to watch you. It's hard to believe. Well, I pay everybody, that's why. Right? <laughs> I'm paying the watch. My check here. Right. It's in the mail. It's in the mail. The check is in the mail. <laughs> Great, you succeeded in getting dirty pants. Woo! I need a sun. Checks in the mail, Danny. <laughs>